Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and this is a very, very cool ThinkPad. Let's get right into it. This is the ThinkPad P50. This thing is absolutely gorgeous and is an extremely powerful workstation class laptop. Before I just completely gush on this thing, I had the opportunity to talk to Rob Herman, who is the project manager for the P-Series over at Lenovo, and he really impressed upon me a new appreciation for these class of ThinkPads. They really are a no compromise device that are purpose built for their industry partners. And I know that that might sound like quite the marketing tagline, but this is kind of a computer that's built for a very niche crowd with some very specific needs. And on the used market, they are incredibly powerful and good value. If you'll indulge me, I'll tell you a quick story. So uh, a number of years ago, uh, it was 2014, 2015, you know, we, we, we were working to create the, the P series portfolio. Uh, prior to that, you know, you, you, we talked about the A20P being the first ThinkPad workstation. Uh, then, then it evolved into W series, right? So ThinkPad W series was, was our, was our workstation, uh, series of, of ThinkPads. And, uh, we created ThinkPad P-Series because we already had ThinkStation, our desktop brand of, of workstations as P-Series. And we wanted to unify, we wanted to keep the ThinkPad brand name, obviously, uh, but, but unify under one letter to, to signify performance and power uh, for, for the workstation brand. So we created the P-Series umbrella. And um, prior to announcement, I had an opportunity to present to the senior leadership team of Lenovo. And, you know, these were, these were senior leadership meetings that happened, you know, pretty often during the year. And, uh, you know, it was special to, to present to, to the senior leaders. And, you know, it was a typical conference room where you had the U-shaped conference room and you had all these executives in the, in the U and you would stand in the middle as a presenter and show off your products. And, you know, prior to my time up there, just before me, the, the, my peer who managed the rest of the ThinkPad portfolios, who so he had X1, he had T-Series and all these great, you know, thin and light products, he, he, he had spent about 45 minutes in front of them. And during his 45 minutes, he's whipping out, you know, all these thin and light X-Series and passing them around and they're going around the U and the and the executives are holding them up and you know, feeling the weight. And um, when we were when we were launching P series, we were also launching the rebirth of a 17 inch form factor workstation. So that was going to be my feature product. That <laughs> so as I'm watching my peer whip out these these thin and lights, I'm like, hmm. Well. And, and right there, right then and there, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to pass this around. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to stand up there and hold it and talk to them. And, and so I got up there and I said, you know, I, I started talking about the P series and what it meant and you know, how important it was for our business. And I said, and, and our flagship product is the 17 inch, you know, P70, ThinkPad P70. And I opened it up. And I looked right at the, the executive that was sitting at the head of the U and I said, but you know what? I am not going to pass this around. And everybody just looked at me like, what? what? You're not going to pass this around? And I said, yeah, I'm not going to pass this around because this is not for you. This product is not for you. This product is for the engineers at Audi. This product is for the architects at uh, Foster and Partners or uh, oil and gas engineers at Exxon, uh, because they are looking for the power and performance, the maximum power and performance that they can get out of CPU, memory, graphics, hard drive, that can't be delivered in an X-series product. 
It's just not physically possible. So the P series was essentially what would succeed the W series, which I have featured on this channel with the W540. If you haven't seen that video, click right up there and it'll take you right to it. Now, there's a lot of things that have changed. We've got ourselves a new design, new CPUs, RAM, and solid state drives. And it's also a dual fan system. So that means we've got a fan on the left and right hand side. So we've got some excellent cooling. We have a really nice 15.6 inch display, which at its base resolution is 1920 by 1080. It is a 270 nit panel and you could get a touch model or the 300 nit non-touch. If that's still not good enough though, you can bump that up to a 3840 by 2160 300 nit panel. But of course, that's gonna take a pretty significant hit on the battery life. This is the 1920 by 1080 panel. And you know what? For a workstation class machine, I think it's pretty great. If you need a better screen, there are mods to swap another one in or just get an external display. In terms of CPUs, it's all i7 or Xeon. And unfortunately, they are soldered onto the board, but your choices are still fantastic. So you have an i7 6700HQ, an i7 6820HQ, a Xeon E3, uh, 1505M or an E3 1535M and depending on which group of CPUs you got it, for your GPU is an Intel HD 530 or the Xeon HD P530. Dedicated graphics were NVIDIA Quattro M1000M or M2000M and the 1000M was 2 or 4 gigabytes and then the 2000 was 4 gigabytes. RAM was DDR4 2133 megahertz with a maximum of 64 gigs. So four slots. Batteries on these thing was a four cell 66 watt hour or a six cell 90 watt hour. So a lot of battery even for a workstation class machine at its base level. If anyone's curious, this is an i7 6700 HQ, 32 gigs of RAM. And I was actually able to get it through a recycler for about 460 Canadian dollars, which is a significant bargain. These are usually going between six to eight hundred dollars, and they're really worth every single penny. As you can see, we do have a full numpad backlit keyboard with a gorgeous trackpad that has both dedicated buttons for the track point and then dedicated buttons down here as well. You do have a fingerprint reader over here, and on some models you will have a colorometer by Pantone. This one unfortunately does not have it. A few other things to examine is we do have upward firing speakers, and we do have the hinges located on the external of the device. In terms of ports, the front remains perfectly clean, and then on the left hand side we have the smart card slot and an express card 34 millimeter, and then our regular SD card slot is beneath that. And then we have fan exhaust on the left-hand side. Along the back is actually pretty busy. We do have power, Thunderbolt, Ethernet, two times USB ports. This one is always on, and these are of course 3.0. And then on the right-hand side, we have display port, two additional USB ports, and then a headphone microphone comm and Kensington lock slot in the corner. Other things to note is that we do have a docking connector on the bottom as well. So if you like docking solutions, this is a great machine for you. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, there's an awful lot to like on the exterior, but I would suggest that there's even more to like on the inside with this. So let's flip it over and do a very quick disassembly. Removal of the battery is simple. Move the catch over, get a fingernail in there, flip the battery up. This is of course the 90 watt hour. We will grab a screwdriver and then proceed to spin out all of the screws on this cover. There are quite a few, but that's okay. Once all the screws are out, again, a fingernail in the corner there and we've removed this. And everything that we need is facing us upright right here. So we do have, of course, our CMOS battery here underneath a little protector. 
We do have a two and a half inch bay, which is currently holding a two and a half inch SSD. And then we have one of two M.2 NVMe slots holding one uh, Samsung 850 Evo. And then we have another slot here, which can be occupied with another drive. The only thing that you'll need, of course, is a caddy kit like this one. And you would simply, once you've opened it up, put your other drive in here. It comes with a screw and then the caddy can be inserted. And there you go. You have one more M.2 SSD of your choice. Couldn't be simpler. Just requires about a $18 part, I believe. Moving over here, we have our RAM slots. So as you can see, we've got one here. We've got one here, and then the other two are on the keyboard side. So to remove the keyboard, it's just a matter of spinning out the remaining keyboard screws. There's one. There's two. And there's three. With those keyboard screws spun out, we can go ahead and turn the machine over, open it up, move the keyboard all the way up, and then just using a simple pry tool to get some leverage, we can then lift it up, back it out, and flip it forward just like this. Disconnecting the two ribbon cables is trivial. And we can continue our disassembly. So over here, we've got the spot for the LTE modem. Over here, we have the Wi-Fi card. We can see that beautiful chassis protecting everything. And to gain access to our additional RAM slots on this side of the board, we simply need to spin that screw out move this plate over, then we can remove it, and then we can see our additional RAM slots are stacked on top of each other there. While it might have a soldered on CPU, there's lots to like. We can see the dual heat pipe here, keeping that CPU nice and cool as well. If we need to remove the palm rest, we can disconnect the two cables there, undo the remaining screws on the bottom, and pop this up from the top. So with that being said, let me reassemble everything and let's turn this beautiful beast on. In battery saver mode you can expect to get about five hours if you're hauling this thing uh, even moderately although keep in mind that this is a workstation so it is designed to work hard and then battery life is kind of a if you need to move it around for a short amount of time scenario it's not meant to run this thing all day on battery although that is definitely a stretch goal i'm sure for more modern p series machines the bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, is that if you have a moderately good budget and you know where to look, the P-Series has all of the legacy ports and all of the forward-facing ports that a device in the year 2021 could possibly need that's mobile. You need USB, it has it. It has Express Card, it's got Smart Card, it has Thunderbolt. It just has what you need, and that is pretty much the idea that Rob and his team had when they designed one of these things is that it has to do everything and they are willing to compromise on thickness, they're willing to compromise on weight, and because of that they can build a gorgeous machine. The people that are going to use this are not the same people that use an X1 Carbon or an X1 Nano. These are the people that are doing some very serious lifting and need some CPUs to carry that weight. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. 
It's been a fantastic addition to my collection and I can't wait to put it to work. If you do have any specific questions or maybe if you want to see it uh, stress test a couple things, let me know down in the comment section below. And with that being said, I hope that you would consider doing the big four. Uh, please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because maybe one day in the future I'll be able to feature another ThinkPad workstation class machine because I think these things are really, really cool. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.